I would like to acknowledge the, the presence later on of Senator Tolentino and Senator Robin Padilla, who promised to be here, physically present. Nasa kabila lang sila, maraming hearing kasi, nagkasabay-sabay. And uh, other members of uh, the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs. Thank you for attending to this hearing. For today's hearing, we shall take into consideration bills that uh, seeks to institutionalize anti-drug abuse councils in local government units, uh, Senate Bill Number 203, filed by this representation, and Senate Bill Number 470, filed by Senator Jingo Estrada. Now, may I request the committee secretary to recognize the guests and resource persons present in today's hearing. Thank you very much, sir. We would like to acknowledge the presence of the following guests. From the DILG, we have Yusek Juan Victor Llamas, Undersecretary for External and Legislative Affairs. From the Department of Education, uh, we also have uh, Attorney Sincha Pulido. From the Department of Education, Excuse me. Uh, we have uh, Assistant Secretary Dexter Galban. From the Department of Justice, represented by the following state prosecutors, Attorney Rosario Elena Cuevas and Attorney Don Rick Ventura. Ah, online. It's online, sir. Eh, okay. From the Department of Finance, we have the Chief Tax Specialist, Ms. Jean Ginto. From the Department of Budget and Management, ah, sorry. Department of Budget and Management, uh, we have online Mr. Nihal C. Abdul Rauf. He is the officer in charge of the Chief Budget and Management Specialist. Also, we have online Ms. Amabel Colin Francisco, the Budget and Management Specialist too. From the Department of Health, we have uh, Mr. Rodney Desmond Daniel Carsa, Health Education and Promotion 4. From the Department of Social Welfare and Development, we have online, we have the online presen presence online of Undersecretary Eduardo M. Unay, Undersecretary Rowena Nina O. Taduran, uh, Attorney Joyet A. Vinyas, uh, Mr. Garrett Mauro C. Riz. From the IDEA, all online, sir, we have the presence of uh, Attorney Michael T. Manjares, Mr. Romeo o. Auditor, and Mr. Matt Joffrey T. Rayala. From the Dangerous Drugs Board, we have here uh, Secretary Catalino Cui and Under Secretary Earl P. Saavedra. Uh, the Philippine National Police is represented by the following officers. Uh, Police Lieutenant General Jose Chiquito M. Malayo. Turn, sir. Uh, Police Brigadier General Alan Nobleza. Police Brigadier General Narciso Domingo, sir. Uh, police, uh, and with us present also uh, is Police Master Sergeant Jonathan Sikai. Uh, we, we also have guests online from the PNP. Uh, we have Police Brigadier General Arnel Amor Libed. Police Colonel Cosme A. Abrenica, Police Colonel Raymond A. De Guzman, uh, 
Good afternoon, and sir. Police Lieutenant Colonel Darwin Clark Pass. Uh, before you continue, Comsec, I would like to um, acknowledge the presence of Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Thank you. Thank you, Idol. Uh, magandang uh, hapon po, uh, ginoong tagapangulo at sa lahat po ng ating mga bisita. Magandang tanghali po. Thank you. Please continue. Thank you, sir. From the National Youth Commission, uh, it is rep the agency is represented by its executive director, uh, Ms. Leia T. Villalon. Uh, we sent invitation to the Civil Service Commission. Unfortunately, sir, they sent their regrets. Uh, we also sent invitation to the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines, but uh, there was no confirmation made. Uh, wala to, no? We also sent letters of invitation to the National uh, to the League of Provinces of the Philippines, but uh, the people who confirmed are not yet online. We also sent invitations to the League of Cities of the Philippines, but they sent regrets. We also sent a uh, letter to the Liga ng Mga Barangay. Uh, supposedly, Director uh, Fanlo will be here, but uh, it's not yet here, sir. We also sent invitation to the League of the Municipalities of the Philippines, but no information yet, sir. With regard to the NGOs, which we have sent letter yesterday only, sir, we also sent letter to Dr. Lee Garcia, no reply yet, to the Hukum Representative Judge Corazon Gaitel Yandera, no uh, reply yet, sir. With regard to the two organizations, Street Law, uh, Attorney Cathy Alvarez is confirmed. He, she's now online, sir. Uh, with the, the No Box Philippines, uh, we in, invited Ms. Maria Ines Feria. Uh, she said that she'll be online, but she's not here yet. And Ms. Arlene Santos sent her regrets. And before I finish, sir, I would just... Uh, we confirmed the online presence of uh, Ms. Maria Ines Feria of Novax Philippines. Ito saan to? Online. Hindi ito si Lopez. Come sec, come sec. Yes. Just, uh, just acknowledge uh, yung andito. Yes, sir. Huwag mo na sabihin yung mga online. nag-regret uh, sa kakahiya naman. Oh, sige, sir. Sorry, sir. Regret yung invitation natin. Huwag mo na sabihin yun. Yes, sir. Sorry, just sir. Uh, sabihin mo lang yung andito. Uh -oh. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, sir. And we also have online director Lope B. Santos. We want, would also like to acknowledge the presence again of uh, ASEC uh, Galban, sir. Sir, we would like also to put on record the following agencies that have already submitted their position papers, namely DDB, uh, the DepEd, LPP, and uh, the DILG, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Komsik. Um, again, good morning sa ating lahat. Uh, good afternoon pala sa ating lahat. As I have said, uh, both bills in consideration for today's hearing aim to institutionalize anti-drug abuse councils or ADACs in local government units. Sa loob ng higit na tatlong taon ko sa Senado, nakita ko kung gaano kahirap magpasa ng mga panukalang batas. Maraming proseso na dinaraanan, maraming debate ang paglalahukan at uh, mahabang panahon ang kinakailangan. Pero hindi namang mga panukala na madaling na isa, na isa sa batas. Ngunit merong umabot ng dekada bago makarating sa plenaryo ng Senado. Last Congress, we passed Republic Act number no. 11926 or an act penalizing willful and indiscriminate discharge of firearms. When we passed it on third reading, I remember Senator Wynne Gatsalian saying, Buti na ipasa na natin ito. Lagi kong pinafile ang bill na ito kahit noong nasa House of Representatives pa ako. This only means that he has been waiting for almost 10 years before his bill finally became a law. Katulad ng willful and indiscriminate discharge of firearms bill ni Senator Wynne Gatsalian, 
hindi naging madali ang pagsasabatas ng ADAC bill last Congress. Time and its constraints put up with us. Pero muntik na. Muntik na talaga. Kunding-kunti lang uh, ng dahil lang sa pandemic, hindi ito na bigyan ng uh, kaukulang pansin na masyado. Kaya na short tayo. But uh, lumusot na ito. Lumusot na ito. Kunti na lang. Uh, Maaari natin sabihin, sayang, kunti na lang batas na sana. Kung may sapat lang tayong oras noong nakarang kongreso, naipasa na sana natin ito. However, as chairperson of this committee, I choose to take a more positive outlook. All our diligence and rigor have not gone to waste. Our hard work in the 18th Congress helped make sure that today, in the 19th Congress, we have a more clear-cut path to follow. A clear-cut path that makes way for the sweet passage of this measure into law. Ma-recall ko pa, halos araw-araw, nandoon itong uh, sila si Yusik, uh, si Secretary Koy, si Yusik Sabidra, at saka yung PNP natin, at saka uh, PDEA, araw-araw. Pero hindi nabigyan ng, uh, but uh, andyan talaga yung interest natin na may sabatas ito. At maraming salamat again, sir, for uh, doing that for us. Uh, we have gained so much ground and tactical victories in our war on drugs. Battles are fought in our streets, but the holes of the Congress can provide our law enforcement additional weapons in this war. As always, I look forward to the valuable insights of my fellow senators, as well as uh, the resource persons present in this hearing. I am confident that all of us, government agencies and local government units, are one in our commitment to finally live in a drug-free, crime-free Philippines. I believe there is no better time than now. Ipasana natin ito. Thank you. And uh, from here, I would like to, kung merong uh, opening statement ng ating kasama dito na si Senator Robin Padilla, I... You have the floor, sir. Uh, Your Honor. Uh, ginoong uh, tagapangulo, wala pa muna po. Ako yung makikinig muna po sa talakayan. Maraming salamat, Senator Ruben Padilla. Ating mga ibang senador online. Okay. Uh, I'm here uh, para orderly yung ating presentation. At saka, very short lang tayo dahil mag, uh, marinig na naman natin, magre-ring na yung... Uh, yung uh, session magre-ring na naman mamaya-maya kaya itong ating uh, order of presentation first the ILG the assistant daw po sabi ko maandito ko yung video kasi hindi kayo nakukunan sayang sir mm, sige sige uh, for administrative uh, reasons uh, the session uh, the hearing is suspended for Ah, one minute lang. One minute. Suspension. Uh, for orderly presentation, uh, this is the order of presentation. Uh, first, the ILG, then DDB, then uh, DOH, then PNP, PDEA, DSWD, NYC, and uh, others who will uh, come later. Uh, the ILG, sir, you have the floor. Good afternoon, Senator Bato de la Rosa and Senator Robin Padilla. On the part of the Department of Interior and Local Government, Sir, uh, we continue to support the bill as we did before in the 18th Congress. Uh, uh, we are 100% uh, supportive of the bill. Uh, 
we just want to to comment on the harmonization and consolidation of the two bills and also to include the barangay the badak uh, and also on the proposed uh, two percent uh, budget uh, appropriation of two percent from the uh, local government units we also support that your honor uh, we have already filed our uh, position paper on this matter, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Yusik Lemos. Uh, andyan ka naman, last Congress, no? Andyan ka na, dati ka na dyan. Wala pa po, pero... Bago ka lang. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, but anyway, uh, for uh, uh, as a backgrounder, yung 2% tinanggal namin yun sa aming ma final version of the bill dahil yun nga, may nag oppose yung mga taga-ulap kasi... At saka, may opinion rin ang DO ang ang DILG no na baka mas malaki pa sa 2% ibibigay ng ibang cities, ibang LGOs that kung i-limit natin sa 2% yes, sir, at, at, at least 2% po at least 2% yes, nga yes, at least 2%. pero tinanggal lang yan dahil yun ang naging opposition ni Senator Drillon noon uh, dahil nga ayaw niya nga ayaw niya nga micromanage yung fiscal uh, management ng mga LGO huwag na naroon pakialaman but anyway uh, thank you for that support. Yeah. Uh, ang ganda po. Uh, no less than uh, the ALJ supporting that. Kaya pwede na nating ibalik yan. We, we expect po na may mga na meron naman po silang pondo po sa mga darating na. Lalong-lalo na uh, the windfall that they get from the Mandanas ruling ay uh, hindi sila mahirapan. Yung elbow room nila as para uh, sa fiscal uh, management uh, is concerned is... Uh, Medyo maluwag-luwag na. But anyway, uh, thank you for that support. Huh? Uh, Yusik Lemas. Uh, thank you po. Next is uh, DDB, sir. Uh, uh, mag good afternoon po sa ating Honorable Chairperson, Senator Ronald De La Rosa, and uh, Senator uh, Robin Hood Padilla, and other senators online. Magandang hapon po pati sa lahat ng mga co-workers natin dito present. At the outset, uh, let me convey our... Wala po kaming ano, wala po kaming presentation just like uh, during the uh, organizational meeting but we have our statement of support and we, uh, let us convey our uh, gratitude for inviting us in this uh, joint public hearing of the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs and the Committee on Local Government on Senate Bill Number 203 introduced by uh, Honorable uh, Ronald De La Rosa and Senate Bill 470, introduced by uh, Senator uh, Estrada. So the Dangerous Drug Board is in full support of these uh, two bills. Uh, and we believe that the, the bills will strengthen and enhance the enforcement of our in illegal drug uh, campaign. Thank you very much. Salamat, sir. Uh, alam kong wala ka na may dagdag. You've been, uh, you've been following this up for the last three years. So, <laughs> naubos na lahat ng uh, input mo dito. Uh, next, uh, can we have DOJ? Uh, DOH? DOH? Department of Health? Yes, sir? Afternoon, Your Honor. Sana yung paborito kong uh, doktor sa DOH na palagi nag dito sa Sa I, dangerous drugs? I think, sir, that's uh, Dr. Clarence. Nebra? Yeah. Nasa, nasa, nasa yan? Nandiyan pa rin? Uh, I think, sir, uh, he has been reassigned uh, Las Piñas uh, TRC. If I'm not uh, mistaken. Las Piñas? Yes, sir. Oo. Next time, pagkuhan, patinin rin ninyo yun. Know, dahil, uh, para may continuation so. yung ating uh, airport dito. Yes, sir. Honor. Salamat, please. Uh, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, So, good afternoon po to everyone, your honors, uh, and colleagues in the government. Um, the DOH would like to express its support to Senate Bill Number 203 and uh, 470, which seeks to institutionalize anti-drug abuse council, uh, the local government. Um, drug dependency is a problem for both nations and individuals. And um, while the drug issue is generally a matter of law and order, individuals affected by um, this issue mainly suffer from physical and mental um, health problems. And through the Comprehensive Dangerous Act of 2022, the DOH is mandated to oversee, monitor, supervise all uh, drug rehabilitation intervention, aftercare, and follow-up programs. And DOH fulfills these responsibilities through respective bureaus and offices. But these um, really require 
a whole of uh, intersectoral action and whole of a uh, government approach no, in addressing this, which we think the Anti-Drug uh, Abuse Council could serve as a platform for collaboration, especially at the local level. Um, with this put, the DOH concurs with the intent of these measures in strengthening the country's uh, public health approach in prevention, treatment, and rehabilitation of uh, drug abuse. We would just like to provide um, some recommendations on addressing uh, stigma among uh, persons who use uh, drugs, uh, which we will submit to the committee uh, once our position paper has been signed by our OIC secretary, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for that uh, support that we get from you. Meron lang atang kunting tanong si Senator Robinson Padilla. If you, if you want to, please, uh, you can share that question. Uh, gusto ko lamang pong klaruhin na uh, mahal na taga-Pangulo. Napakaganda po kasi nung sinabi nung ating uh, representative mula sa DOH na mental health and physical health problem ang drug addiction. Tama po ba ako? Correct, Mr. Ingram. Opo, kasi marami pong mga uh, uh, dati ang nagsasabi na ang drug addiction ay criminal problem. Nagkakasundo na po ba ang PNP at ang DOH na ang drug addiction ay mental at physical health issue? Um, the Department of Health has always um, viewed the issue on uh, substance abuse as a public health issue, po, uh, and we are open to collaborate with a uh, drug enforcement agency towards the um, improving the approach on um, the issue on drugs, sir. Thank you. Apo, kasi napakahalaga pong punto po nun, sapagkat kapag pinag-usapan po natin ang drug abuse, hiwalay po yan sa mga tulak. Kasi yung mga tulak, yun yung criminal. Pero yung biktima, kailangan tanggapin po siguro nating dalawa, ang ating pong kapulisan at ang DOH, na mental at physical health issue po ito. Yun lang po yung gusto kong linawin. Kasi dati hindi sila magkasundo eh. Ngayon po, okay na po ito. Nakakasundo na po sila, sir, sa PNP, na ang, uh, ang drug abuse po sa mga naging biktima ng addiction ay mental at health uh, problem na po siya, hindi na po siya criminal? Uh, sir, for now, we consider that as additional understanding, but as far as the PNP is concerned, once they're in possession of drugs, we still have to arrest them. Apo, iba naman po yung issue nun eh, kung meron ka ng hawak, eh talagang, yes, sir. Yes, sir. meron ka na talagang violation at criminal intent. Ibig ko lang pong sabihin, pagdating po sa rehabilitation, uh, hindi ba po dapat uh, ang trato natin sa mga drug addict, hindi na sila criminal. Yes sir. Opo, kasi ang uh, na, papansin ko lang po nung no, ating pong mga jails, ay eh, masyado na pong punong-puno. Sumasabog na po ang uh, laman ng ating mga kulungan dahil din sa usapin ng hindi naman tulak yung nandun sa loob kung hindi biktima din. Nahulihan sila pero biktima lang ito eh. Y yun, yun lang po ang gusto kong linawin. Ano? Kung nagkakasundo na po ba ang DOH at ang kapulisan na bago natin silang tratuhin na kriminal, Tatuhin muna natin silang biktima. Yun lang po. Gusto ko lang pong malinawan yun. Hindi naman po ibig sabihin na tatanggalin natin yung legal liability nila. Hindi po. Yun lang pong sana mauna yung rehabilitation. Kapag nakakulong ka na, bago natin dikdikin dun sa kaso niya, magbabigyan muna ng rehabilitation galing po sa DOH. Siguro, uh, Your Honor, uh... Ma matagal lang stand diyan talaga sa PNP na yung sinasabi namin na uh, save the user, jail the poser. Yan pala, matagal lang stand. So, ibig sabihin, tinitingnan talaga ng kapulisan na yan ay uh, mental and health problem, mental health problem yung uh, drugs. But, uh, ganun pa man, since uh, may na-violate siya na batas, yung position, as you have said nga, hindi natin pwede isang tabi yung dahil batas talaga yon but still, first and foremost, ang consideration ng police dyan, ng law enforcement, sa isang user ay biktima. Uh, biktima talaga siya. So, nakaintindihan tayo dyan. 
from the health uh, department of health uh, point of view and the law enforcement point of view, the same talaga ang panila biktima yung uh, user. Sir, uh, DBB, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, sa, sa, sa ngayon po, doon sa ating Philippine Anti-Drug Strategy, na covered ng Executive Order Number no. 66 na pinirmahan ni former President uh, Duterte. Meron po tayong dalawang pillars dyan sa campaign natin eh. Uh, yung supply reduction and the demand reduction pillars. Doon sa demand reduction, we're giving emphasis or more significant effort doon sa ating uh, 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 rehabilitation and re reintegration ng ating mga drug dependents. Tama po kayo, we consider the drug dependents to be victims. No? Mga, mga health issue po yan. And uh, we are even trying to remove yung mga stigmatism. We do not call them addicts anymore. We call them drug dependents or recovering drug dependents. Kasi nga, we see them, we would like to give them a second chance sa, sa life. Kaya, uh, although we still continue, we, we still sustain yung ating supply reduction, meaning yung law enforcement side, but Yung ating uh, recovery, rehabilitation, reintegration, yun po ang ating tinututukan ngayon. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, before we continue, I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator uh, Francis Tolentino. Sir, thank you for coming. You, you have an uh, opening statement? Okay. So, ito, nakita ko lang yung kwan eh. Uh, yung order natin after uh, DOH, sana PNP, but nakita ko si Ms. Jean Ginto ng DOF. Hindi ko ito pwede palalagpasin dahil uh, pag uh, palalagpas ko ito, uh, mag-object ito, mag -object na mag-object ito pagdating sa panding. <laughs> yan ang problema natin dyan eh. Kaya mabuti tumatawa ka. Ha? At least, uh, good sign yan. Good sign yan na hindi ka mag-object doon sa 2% na sinasabi ng DILG. <laughs> Please, uh, go ahead. You have the floor, ma'am. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and the other members of the com Senate Committee and our colleagues from the government. Uh, from the Department of Finance, Paul, we will still submit our official position on the two measures and we fully recognize for the intent of the bills to um, ensure the recovery of drug users through an efficient and accessible drug abuse treatment and rehabilitation centers. Um, however, sir, <laughs> we, we would like to initially <laughs> we would like to initially manifest on the provisions under the SB um, two zero three on the appropriation on substantial portion of the annual appropriations to fund anti illegal drug related programs, activities, and operations as mandatory item in their budget, as well as under SB four seven zero on the appropriation of two percent. Uh, you mentioned earlier, sir, um, we, in the view that this may no longer be necessary, sir, because uh, there is an existing... Um, pa Pakiyot, Pakiyot, there, uh, this is no longer uh, necessary. necessary, sir. No longer necessary. Yes, sir, okay. because there is a um, joint memorandum between DILG and the DDB uh, on this. Um, if I may uh, read me your honors, under that... Um, uh, joint memorandum under the organizational and functions, the local government units are already mandated to activate, strengthen, and ensure the functionality of the local ADAC. And also, uh, it is also mandated to appropriate a substantial amount of funds for anti-illegal drug-related programs, activities, and operations, and as well as under um, the local sanggunians also shall appropriate substantial funds from their annual budgets to be utilized in assisting or enhancing the enforcement of um, RA 9165. So, sir, um, there are already funds uh, available uh, to this uh, proposed measure. So, this may no longer be necessary, sir. Ano yung binanggit mo dyan, ma'am? Joint memorandum? Ito pa, sir. DILG and uh, Dangerous Drug Board uh, Joint Memorandum. DILG and? Uh, dangerous Drug Board. Oh. Ah, DDB, DDB. So, meron na pala kayo, sir, uh, Joint Memorandum. Uh, so, go ahead. Uh, exactly, uh, Mr. Chair. That is because of the absence of this uh, ADAC law. That's why we resort to that Joint Memorandum with DILG so that we can somehow... Uh, Make a uniform, make uniform the local all local government units to uh, set aside at at least two percent of their uh, budget 
for anti-illegal drug activities. Uh, the misconception is that when you say anti-illegal drug, drug activities, they thought it's all about law enforcement, but it's not. It covers a wider variety of activities. It, we may include uh, skills training, uh, employment, uh, athletic, uh, youth activities, cultural, and others. So, malaki po yun. Yung 2% uh, for some local government executives, maybe priority nila ang anti-illegal drug campaign. Baka mas malaki pa sa 2% ang allocate nila. But for the others, it's different. It's another thing. So that uh, joint uh, memorandum is in lieu of what we are trying to propose an ADAC law. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, for your information, ma'am, ba bago ka lang dyan sa akin o mat matagal na? Uh, medyo matagal na po. Matagal na ako. So, alam mo na ang history dito. Alam mo na ang history dito. But anyway, just to refresh you, yung nga, sabi ni... Uh, Secretary Koy, uh, lumabas yung joint memorandum agreement between uh, DDB and uh, the ILG in the absence of uh, this uh, particular provision of the law. Uh, kaya nga, nilagay natin ito in order to institutionalize uh, the ADAC. Uh, yun lang gusto natin palabasin. But since you register no objection, I'm happy. I'm happy na sinabihan mo ako na meron na pala, hindi na kailangan, pero you are not registering your objection, di ba? Sa 2%, okay ka lang? Uh, already mandated naman po siya. Actually, sir, ang in addition po dun sa gusto kong sabihin, under the local government code naman po, ang LGUs po ay mandated then to uh, provide uh, funds sa mga um, drug, I mean, drug-related ano, um, uh, activities. Let's say on, under Section 7 po, uh, they provide for a more specific role of the social welfare services of an LGU, which may be coordinated with the barangay in the performance of the regular functions, which includes po um, social welfare service, um, I mean, sorry, um, community... Community-based okay, rehabilitation okay. program. Okay, okay. Nakuha na natin yan. Uh, uh, meron yes, yan. Meron talaga yan. But uh, ang habo lang nitong DDB at ng the ILGs may institutionalize through uh, legislation. Uh, but uh, just hope, hindi naman sa'yo kayo mag-question yan. 2% lang yan. Pagbigyan na natin. Sir, we will provide po our official uh, 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 details of our work. Hindi lang taon na lang ito nang hinihintay itong batas na ito. Tulungan na lang natin ito. Ito mga tao na ito talaga eh. Eh, pinasok na lahat ng kwan, yung, yung buhay nila nito, sinusugal na nila sa problema sa droga eh, luma, umalis na lang si, si President Duterte si Malacanang hanggang ngayon nandiyan pa rin yung problema sa droga eh. kaya talagang nakita nyo kung gaano ka problema at uh, kung gaano kailangan talaga ang suporta nila para uh, matapos na itong problema natin sa droga but anyway, thank you, alam ko hindi ka mag uh, re register ng objection salamat ma'am uh, si Yusek Earl Sabidra Please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Honorable Senators. Just to shed light po, since nabanggit na po ng ating uh, Chief Tax Specialist from DOF yung tungkol sa DILG-DDB Joint well, Memorandum. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Uh, Sorry, sir. For a while, I just would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator uh, Pungo. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. Please continue. Thank you. Good afternoon, Senator Go. Uh, to continue, Mr. Chair, since na-mention na po ng ating Chief Tax Specialist yung tungkol sa DILG-DDB Joint Memorandum Circular Number no. 1, ang pinanggagalingan po ng uh, DILG at DDB when we explored that particular joint issuance ay yun pong provision under RA-9165, Comprehensive Dangerous Drug Sack of 2002, na talagang substantial amount lang po ang iaalat for uh, the use of our anti-drug abuse councils in its operations and in its programs in support of the national anti-drug campaign. Sa totoo lang po yung 2% na suggested provisions under our memorandum circular, recommendatory po yun. Kasi sa baba po, yung mga local government units, nagtatanong at nagtatanong how substantial is substantial doon sa RA 9165 na provision for the budget ng Anti-Drug Abuse Council. Kaya po, ito yung ating naging workaround, Mr. Chair, Honorable Senators, at legislation nga po talaga yung isang way forward na nakikita natin to institutionalize. Kaya nga, to avoid confusion, ito, sinabi naman ito sa RNN 165, nakalagay na yan eh, Section 21, 
Tapi Section 51, Local Government Units Assistance. Local Government Units shall appropriate a substantial portion of the respective annual budgets. But then again, sabi mo nga, nagtatanong yung mga LGU sa baba, how substantial is substantial? So in order to answer that substantiality of that issue, we have to set 2%. Di ba? Oh, okay ka lang, ha? <laughs> okay ka lang. Okay. <laughs> so, balik tayo sa 2%, sir. Ano? DILJ. Papayag ang DILJ, di ba? That's how serious DILJ right now. Noon, nung kayo sa DILJ, okay ba kayo? Ay, ay sino yun? Si Ricom Chiberi. Uh, okay ba siya doon sa 2% dati, di ba? So, the same, the same stand ng DILJ. So, okay tayo doon. Ah, uh, Sige, uh, next. So, uh, Senator Bongo, you have uh, opening statement? Uh, you have the floor. If you know... Ikaw, wala kasi. Magandang araw, Mr. Chairman, my uh, distinguished uh, colleagues and our respected uh, resource persons. Uh, sila, Secretary Koy. At uh, sayang, no, hindi na tapos to, Mr. Chairman. Konting-konti na lang. Ako'y pabor talaga rito dahil uh, ang itong ADAC, uh, panahon pa sa Davao City, kailangan talaga ito. Kailangan institutionalize na rin po talaga ito. Anyway, according to Article 2, Section 5 of the 1987 uh, Philippine Constitution, the maintenance of peace and order, the protection of life, liberty and property, and promotion of the general welfare are essential for the enjoyment by all the people of the blessings of democracy. Isa po sa advokasiya ng nakarang administrasyon ang uh, pag-maintain ng uh, peace and order sa ating bansa. The Committee on Public Order, headed by my good friend, uh, ako po bilang uh, vice chair ng committee, uh, supportado ko po si Senator, uh, ang aming chairman, Senator De La Rosa, along with uh, Senator Rebilla. Er, Rebilla. Padilla. Padilla. <laughs> Partner ko kasi ito. <laughs> Nalilito ako puro mga kaibigan. Plays a very significant role in making sure that our kababayans get to enjoy the blessings of democracy through peace and order. Malaga na hindi masayang ang ating nasimulan at may pagpatuloy ang pagsugpo sa mga nasa likod ng illegal na droga gaya ng ginawa ng Administrasyon Duterte para masulusunan hindi ng problema sa kriminalidad at katiwalian. Pag uh, bumalik ang droga, babalik po ang uh, kriminalidad at babalik po ang korupsyon. Damay-damay yan. Kaya uh, during the campaign of uh, President Rodrigo Duterte in 2016, isa sa kanyang ipinangako, uh, labanan po ang kriminalidad, labanan po ang illegal na droga, labanan po ang korupsyon sa gobyerno. Hindi man po na, na natupad ang lahat ng ito ng buong buo, pero sinikap niya po na to the barest minimum po na bumaba ang crime rate natin. The Duterte administration has demonstrated its dedication to maintain peace and order in the country. In fact, the crime rate in the country has decreased by 73.76% from 2016 to 2021 according to the record of the Philippine National Police. Bagamat po hindi ito perfecto, sinika po ng Duterte administration na bumaba ang crime rate natin. And of course, sa tulong po ng ating police uh, ngayon, kaya isa sa kanyang inuna, pinangako at tinutupad, ay doblehin po yung sahod ng ating mga entry position ng ating kapulisan. Hindi po ma may isa kakatuparan yung pinangako niya. Hindi po sa tulong ninyo. At pulis ngayon, ginagalang nalalapitan ang mga pulis natin. Of course, sa tulong po ng ating uh, D uh, DDB, itong Anti-Drug Abuse Council natin, sana po ay may isa katuparan. Anyway, uh, the Duterte administration has demonstrated its dedication to maintain peace and order in the country. Nabagit ko po kanina, sa, sa totoo lang po, sa nakita ko nung nakarang administrasyon, kapag nakontain ang paglaganap ng illegal na droga, kasama ang buwa-baba ang krimen, pero kapag lumala na naman ang droga, kapag dumami muli ang gumagamit nito, bumabalik po ang kriminalidad. Dati, 
Takot ang tao sa mga drogista. Nung panahon po ni Pangulong Duterte, ang mga drogista ang uh, takot. Naramdaman naman po ng uh, Pilipino ito na ligtas po silang maglakad sa gabi, sa gabi. At may peace of mind po ang mga magulang na nakakawi po ang kanilang mga anak na hindi nababastos. On my part, as chair of the Senate, uh, uh, as chair of the Committee on Sports, I continue to encourage our youth to stay away from illegal drugs. Kaya pag bumibisita po ako sa mga komunidad, lagi kong ipinapayo sa mga kabataan na umiwas po sa illegal na droga ay sa halip ibuhos na lang po ang kanilang panahon sa eskwela at iba pang produktibong gawain tulad ng sports. Uh, get into sports, stay away from uh, drugs. Malaki po ang aking tiwala at buo po ang aking suporta sa bagong administrasyon ni Pangulong uh, Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr., na mas mapalakas pa ang kampanya natin laban sa illegal na droga at kriminalidad upang tuluyang mabigyan ng na mas ligtas at komportabling buhay ang mga Pilipino. It is for this reason that I would like to express my support to the passage of the bills we are hearing today. Long overdue na po itong uh, uh, Anti-Drug Abuse Council Law that uh, seek to institutionalize anti-drug abuse councils in every local government unit. Ang ayon po ako sa panukalang ito na sa hangari ng ating gobyerno na mapat, mapanatili ang peace and order sa ating bansa through the eradication of illegal drugs. This measure will be able to help the Marcos administration continue our fight against illegal drugs and bring us a step closer to our goal of a drug-free and safer uh, country. Ang importante rito, makalakad pa rin ang ating kababayan na komportable at hindi nasasaktan at walang pangamba na sila po'y masasaktan mula sa mga kriminal at sa mga drug addict. Marami pong Pilipino ang gusto pong mamuhay ng tahimik at ligtas. Huwag nating sayangin yung trabaho po ng ating polis at ng ating militar to maintain is in order. Yung naumpisaan po nila at kung ano man po ang pamamalakad po noon, sana po ipagpatuloy nyo po to make uh, life uh, comfortable to all Filipinos. Uh, yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. Salamat. Full support po ako sa panukalang ito, uh, Mr. Thank, Chairman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, pagbutuhan ito sa third reading, ha? dapat uh, andyan ka? <laughs> Automatic. <laughs> ba? Kula, kulang ba? Hindi naman kulang, pero na short lang talaga tayo ng panahon noon. Third reading na sana yun, pero ano yun, si Secretary Koy, oh. nabutal na talaga tayo. But anyway. Sige, salamat, salamat. Salamat tayo ito ngayon. Dahil uh, simula natin ng maaga. Salamat, so, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. From here, uh, let's proceed with PNP. You want to say something, please? Uh, if you have any pre presentation, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, sir, good afternoon. Lieutenant General Malayo, DCA of PNP, sir. Sir, we are very much appreciative of the bill, but if we are allowed to recommend two points, sir, that in the ADAW office, we could include the so-called uh, data protection officer. So these revelations of surrender or could be protected from any publication. Before I respond, uh... May technical glitch na naman daw. Uh, one minute sa uh, suspension. Ganun na tayo kalotek dito. Sige na lang kasi. Anong? Hindi nag-aagawan siya. Ha? Paayos mo. May CA, sir. Nag-aagawan siya.
दीपक before we uh, suspend meron si nasabi ang uh, ating uh, uh, deputy chief for administration ng uh, uh, please continue grab the floor and uh, please uh, please uh, take note of that please once again mr chair good afternoon police lieutenant general jose chiquito malayo the deputy chief pnp for administration the two points from the PNP, sir. Number one, if in the I mean in the establishment of adult or anti-drug abuse office, we could specify that there must be a designated data protection officer, sir. And number two, the uh, functions of the ADA to, to us is limited only as specified on prevention, rehabilitation, and monitoring of drug dependency, meaning those persons involved in the illegal drug trade is not specified. So if we could include also that ADAC will include in its monitoring the existence of illegal drug situations in that area. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you. I have no objection with that. In fact, I am uh, happy that you bring that out. Uh, for, for one, yung sinasabi mo, last mo na sinasabi, uh, kaya naging successful yung ating uh, we had 1.6 million surrenderers because of the effort of the people from the barangay nag-identify nung dapat mag-surrender, di ba? So, maganda po yan. Yung namang suggestion na uh, data protection officer, there is a law mandating uh, that yung uh, data protection law na kailangan mo ng data protection officer sa lahat ng offices para uh, mangungalaga sa lahat ng data ng uh, opisina. So, tama po yun. Dahil kapag uh, mayroong data protection officer, siya ang mananagot kapag may leakage na mangyayari doon sa mga record nila kung sino yung suspected poser, suspected user, doon sa kanilang barangay, sino yung suspected uh, protectors. Doon lahat. Kasi yung iba nagagamit siya ng mga ninja cups noon yung, uh, yung listahan na yan. Dala yung listahan. Puntahan ng ninja cup yung isang user uh, poser doon. Dito ka sa listahan, ha? Magbigay ka sa akin para matanggal yung pangalaw mo sa listahan. Or para hindi ka namin operitan. May ginagawa yun ng mga tarantadong polis noon. Na ganun. Maraming nangyari na, na ganun noon. Kaya... Maganda yung suggestion mo para maprotektahan yung ating uh, listahan na yan. At may minanagot talaga kapag meron. So, ano ba sasabi mo, DLJ? Additional uh, gastos ito sa 3 years na pagkapunit ng isang uh, 
Beta protection officer. No objection, Your Honor. Okay, okay. Very good. Maganda ba? Maganda yun. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Uh, did, tapos ka? Isa yun? Tapos na? I already cited two points, sir. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you for that. So, after a PNP, kami ito ng PDA? Fine, sir. Online? PDA? Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Good afternoon Your Honor. Pakita niyo mukha mo. Saan, saan ka? I-on niyo yung video. Uh, for a while, Your Honor. Ayan, sige. You have the floor. Your Honor, again, good afternoon. Um, Your Honor, as we did in the past, in the last Congress, uh, we are here again to convey our full support to the passage of uh, Senate Bills 203 and 476. A 470. Uh, we even look forward, Your Honor, for the consolidation of both versions so that the good provisions of Senate Bill 203 will be adapted to Senate Bill 470. Uh, we refer, Your Honor, to the creation of BADAC and the PDEA representation in all ADACs, Your Honor. Um, we are also proposing, Your Honor, to uh, that um, that a provision under the BADAC be inserted. Uh, the provision, Your Honor, um, is that all BADACs shall submit a monthly report to BADAC or CADAC on the status of all identified P woods who undergone general, uh, general intervention and community-based drug rehabilitation program, Your Honor. Uh, the latter shall consolidate the same for its submission to PADAC, and that the PADAC shall submit the said report to the DILG Regional Office, which shall be subsequently forwarded to the DDB, DOH, and the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, Your Honor. Your Honor, the, the ratio behind this uh, proposal, Your Honor, is that, um, um, is this, Your Honor, the purpose of inclusion of the, of the stated provision, Your Honor, is to have a consolidated report of PUDs who have undergone GI and CBDRP from BADAC level to the national level, Your Honor. So we would have a uniform report, Your Honor, in this matter, Your Honor. No, okay. Palakas. Huh. Thank you for that uh, idea. Thank you for that uh, amendment. Gusto nyo amendment na yan. Uh, very good. So, thank you. Thank you for that. Meron pa kayong idagdag? Uh, that would be all, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Salamat. Uh, noted nyo, Kumsek. So, after Pedia, we have Voice uh, WD. Saan ang Voice WD? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. You have the floor. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. And good afternoon, Honorable Senators. In behalf of Secretary Irving Tulfo, we would like to thank you for this opportunity to participate on this committee hearing. The DSWB supports any endeavor that will feed the Filipino people, especially the marginalized communities against illegal drugs. The DSWD will continue to work with our legislators and fellow national agencies to enhance any policies on this important issue. To improve the bills, the DSWD will submit its formal position paper containing its comments and recommendations in the provisions of the proposed measure once signed by our good secretary. That would be all, uh, Your Honor, and maraming salamat po. Thank you, ma'am. Maraming salamat for the support, as always. This WD is very supportive of, of our anti-drug campaign. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Salamat. Uh, from here, uh, we go to NYC. NYC.
Please. Yes po. Uh, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat, sa ating ginoong tagapangulo ng Kapulungan, Senator uh, Bato de la Rosa, uh, Senator Robin Padilla, Senator Tolentino, and Senator Bongo, at sa mga kasamahan po natin na opisyalis dito po sa uh, ating meeting. Uh, in behalf of uh, our Chairman, Undersecretary Ronald Guillen Carlo Cardema, ay nagpapasalamat po. Uh, kasama po ang komisyon, nagpapasalamat po kami na naririnig po at napapakinggan ang ating kabataang Pilipino. For the National Youth Commission sa position and recommendation, um, the NYC, National Youth Commission, louds the legislators' efforts to address one of the compelling issues involving the Filipino people and the youth. No? Uh, the NYC recognizes the capacity of anti-drug abuse councils in empowering value sectors of the community, particularly the vulnerable ones. The NYC also recognizes the importance of grassroots campaigns in the eradication of nationwide problems such as drug abuse. It is suggested to use standardized indicators and data collection tools in monitoring and uh, the implementation of anti-illegal drug programs, projects, and activities at the local level. Um, also, the NYC proposes to consider the release of an executive order solely for the Anti-Drug Abuse Council or ADACS amending EO number 66, 2018 to provide a clearer guideline and all penalties for non-compliance of LGUs. Uh, lastly, it is recommended to include BADAC in the final version of the bill and to capacitate all ADACs through intensive uh, gender sensitivity and human rights trainings. Likewise, the handling of juveniles who will be involved in the operation or drug-related cases, lawful or just handling of cases shall so be well considered. Uh, yan lang po, um, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat, uh, Ma'am Lia Villalon ng uh, NYC. Thank you po. Regreso ako kay uh, uh, Yusik uh, Ronald Cardema. Yes po. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We'll uh, go to DepEd. You have the floor, sir. To our honorable senators, thank you very much. On behalf of our Vice President and Secretary of Education, Sarah Duterte, I would like to thank you for inviting us and welcoming us to the Senate. And I'd like to manifest our support for the institutionalization of the anti-drug abuse councils and the LGUs, particularly because the Department of Education fully supports any and all measures that help us strengthen the National Drug Education Program, more so as we intensify our campaign, our joint campaign, with the Dangerous Drugs Board, uh, Dangerous Drug Board's um, Barcada Contra Droga campaign. And... Furthermore, we believe that this would serve as a good um, supporting mechanism because this can help in the cascading of drug abuse prevention education to our learners. More so that this is a potential complement to the current mandate of our president and the growing campaign for the return of the mandatory ROTC. Because I just came from the DND, um, my dear senator, and we were able to discuss the potential inclusion of drug abuse education prevention um, within the program itself. And having this council will definitely be helpful in that manner. Um, with that being said, we would like just to add a quick recommendation and propose that the Interagency Committee on Illegal Drugs, or ICAD, or ICAD, um, to have oversight functions on the Anti-Drug Abuse Council so that we can have this better coordinated and all of the programs of the President and the Vice President can be better manifested through the councils, both locally and nationally. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for uh, that uh, manifest of support. And alam ninyo, alam po ba ninyo sa DepEd na the youngest drug dependent that surrendered during our Oplanto Kang was nine years old. Uh, nine years old is uh, 
Tapos sisira e de yung utak niya sa Cebu. Yeah. Uh, very young age. Natunaw yung utak sa Cebu. E kawawa ang bata. Kaya talagang kailangan natin yung whole of nation approach uh, dito sa droga. Laban natin sa droga. Uh, just like what uh, NTFLCAC is doing to insurgency, which uh, obviously they are uh, uh, becoming very successful. Ito rin sa drugs. Dahil nga Yes, the obligation of processing kita kawan natin tu sa ating ah uh, uh, ane antara drug campaign, but uh, masyado kasi yang masih limut ang mundo ng droga del um, ampera di to grabe ah uh, hindi basa basa mag surrender yung mga involved di to jadi selaki ng ampera na involved kaya kailang pagtutulong tulungan talaga natin di to all obligation of processing kita kawan natin Uh, lahat ng ahiahin siya ay dapat wag tulong-tulungan thank you for that uh, please extend our regards to uh, your good uh, secretary or uh, vice president thank you very much now uh, let's uh, proceed with the uh, ang suki natin from uh, DOJ attorney Koibas <laughs> attorney uh, you have the floor thank you Mr. Chair uh, good afternoon your honors uh, from the department of justice Uh, we interpose no constitutional or legal objection to the proposed bill, the intention of which is we find laudable, that is, to have a continuous, active, and unified involvement of various government and non-government agencies to sustain the gains of the government in its fight against illegal drugs and to promote drug-free local government units by institutionalizing adducts. In sum, the department, as in previous Congress, supports the enactment of the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Your Honors. Kaya, Attorney Kuibas, last kitang tinawag dahil very sweet to our ears pakinggan yung sinasabi mong interpose there is no constitutional and legal objections ang DOJ dito sa proposed measure. Music to our ears. Thank you, ha? Salamat. Pag-isabi sa iyong uh, Secretary ng Justice, uh, Secretary Rimulia. Thank you very much. So, nakapagsalita na lahat dito na physically present. Can we hear? Meron pa bang sa online na hindi nakapagsalita? DBM. Oh, DBM. Please, you have the floor. DBM. Okay na yung Department of Finance, ha? Hindi na sila nagreklamo, di ba yun? <laughs> Love the flow, ma'am, di ba yun? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, yes, ma'am. As well, Senator Bato de la Rosa and uh, Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Good afternoon as well to the committee secretary and the different representatives from various agencies. Um, I am Nihal. I am... Uh, Uh, I am representing our director, Judith Kiazon, of the Department of Budget and Management, Budget Information Legislative Service. Um, the DBM will be submitting its final position paper on the proposed bills, but um, nevertheless, upon perusal, initial perusal of the bills, uh, we interpose no objection to the establishment of the ADACs. Uh, nevertheless, we would like to note um, our comment on Section Four, particularly particularly item three of Senate Bill Number Four Seven Zero, where it mandates at least two percent of the annual appropriations um, of local government units for anti illegal drug related programs, activities, and operations. Um, we are of the view that um, mandating at least two percent of the annual appropriations of LGU funds for um, the purpose of the bill may be onerous on the part of local government units belonging to lower income class. Um, that would be all, uh, Mr. Um, Chair. Um, yun lang po yung concern namin na ano, based on um, the principle of local fiscal autonomy granted to LGUs uh, as, it, as enshrined also in the 1987 Constitution. Baka onerous lang po siya na imandate Uh, yung at least 2% on the part of LGUs na belonging to lower income classes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you, ma'am. Ismail ako kanina, yakala ko nagbago na yung stand niyo dyan eh. <laughs> so, yun yung consistent pala. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. That has been uh, uh, well taken na uh, Noted uh, ba during the last Congress, uh, talagang uh, kaya nga namin binago uh, yung final draft namin at uh, nagbibiin na lang rin si, uh, si Secretary Koy at saka si uh, Yusik Sabidra. But anyway, uh, there pa tayo hearing but uh, still, uh, we'll take in po ma'am yung inyong uh, punto dito sa 2%. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, po. Thank you, ma'am. Ganda na pangalan mo, Nihal. Thank you. Mahal, mahal. Mahal. Mahal ko po ang Pilipinas. Thank you, ma'am. Ha? Mahal ko po ang Pilipinas. Ay, salamat. Pati po tayo, nagmamahal sa Pilipinas. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bakit, ma'am. Next, we... We give the floor to LPP. Sinong nandiyan? League of Provinces of the Philippines, si Angelica Sanchez. Ma'am, you have the floor? Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Senator De La Rosa. Yes, go ahead. And Senator Padilla. Yes po. Ah, uh, Mr. Chair, alam ko po ngumingiti na kayo kanina nang nagsalita ang DBM. However, we have to echo the position of DBM po kasi uh, not all provinces, especially yung nasa lower level provinces po, will be able to shoulder the 2% funding. Although we understand that there is really a need to peg sana. Pero siguro if we may, ano, if we may suggest dun sa 2%, baka pwede naman po since uh, the anti-drug uh, the anti-drug programs are basically for peace and order, baka naman po pwedeng if fund is source natin from the peace and order fund yes a discretionary baka sakali lang po mr chair and then at the same time dun sa two plantilla positions we uh, we have a little bit of a challenge there mr chair kasi pag nagdagdag pa tayo ng dalawa dalawang positions mo uh, the, D, the DOF specifically the BLGF can bear us out marami na pong LGUs ang lumalampas sa 45 personnel and limitations. So that is the second ano namin dyan, second reservations, Mr. Chair. However, we are not ano naman, uh, uh, we will not oppose any objections kung sakaling pwede siya munang designation in the event na hindi kayang mag-hire ng LGU ng personnel, for plantilla personnel for the anti-drug anti -drug offices. And then, especially ang aming ano dyan sa 2%, we're also looking at the case of the barangays. Baka naman po hindi na talaga nila kakayanin ang budget, Mr. Chair. Yun lang naman po. And then we will be submitting our official position paper as soon as it is signed by our President, Governor Tumayo, who, in, who incidentally wanted to attend, kaya lang po hindi na siya nakaabot dahil yung flight niya is late in the morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes ma'am, salamat po, salamat po. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, anyway, yung concern mo doon ko doon sa additional uh, uh, plantilla position, yung sinadjust ng PMP, uh, suggestion pa lang naman yun. Uh, I-co-consider natin talaga yung uh, inyong uh, uh, kahirapan dyan dating sa ganong uh, appointments. Uh, thank you po ma'am. At saka yung uh, 2%, siguro kausapin na lang natin uh, uh, <laughs> ng uh, DDB yung, uh, yung DLG na baka po din kausapin yung uh, mga LPP, yung OLAP, yung uh, bahala na yung DLG kung kakayaan nila. Kung kakayaan nila, di ba maganda? Pero kung hindi, anyway, this... Uh, it is uh, very flexible. Hindi po tayo nagmamatigas dito. Uh, we are here to complement each other. We are here to help each other uh, pass this uh, law na napakaganda ang objective. So, kung po kayo mag-alala, ma'am, we're taking care of po yung position ninyo. Salamat po. Uh, next is uh, Attorney Kate Alvarez of Street Law. You are around, ma'am? 
a Tormi Cathy Alvarez, Street Low. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. You have the floor. You have the floor. Thank you. Uh, once again, I would like to thank the committee for allowing us to share our views this afternoon. My name is Attorney Kathy Alvarez. I am the Executive Director of Street Law PH. Uh, we are an organization working with the different institutions of the criminal justice system to work for access to justice for many of our marginalized communities. Uh, these include working with our judiciary, uh, the BJMP, where we provide capacity buildings, uh, trainings, as well as with different local government units, uh, including answering some of their concerns and questions regarding uh, the implementation of the Anti-Drug Abuse Councils. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Senator Robin Hood Padilla for mentioning the situation in our jails. We echo the same observation because we also see the same situation during our jail visit. So thank you Paul, very much, Senator Padilla, for taking note of the situation in our detention facilities. So we look at these bills, Senate Bill uh, 470 and 203, as opportunities where we can address the gap um, when it comes to laws on policies and policies on um, genuine community-based uh, rehabilitation and treatment programs because while we believe that there are sufficient laws and policies to support law enforcement operations, we also recognize that there is truly a gap when it comes to our laws and policies on community-based programs. Um, we also echo the position of the Department of Health and reiterate the Philippine government's anti-drug strategy um, mentioned uh, earlier formulated under the leadership of the Dangerous Drugs Board in 2018, recognizing the importance of a public health and social welfare approach to the issue of drugs. And in line with this, we support the creation of councils which are led by health and social welfare offices in the LGUs, consistent with the PADS recognition of the public health approach and social welfare approach. Um, as such, we are looking at the possibility of revisiting uh, the provisions that include indicators for our councils, where instead, for example, of quarterly drug clearing targets, we would like to propose instead, um, how about including indicators that would check our health and social welfare goals, consistent with genuine community-based programs. So we also wanted to mention that um, the Philippine government at present, uh, and this includes the Department of Justice, the Department of Health, uh, the Dangerous Drugs Board, and the Department, uh, and, and the DDB, sorry, I re the DDB is the Dangerous Drugs Board, I apologize, um, have, have implemented uh, for the past year and for the next two years, the UN joint program together with the United Nations Office and on Drugs and Crime, uh, as well as other relevant UN agencies where in this joint program, there have been commitments to take the public health and social welfare approach when it comes to the issue on drugs. And the program also includes very specific indicators for community-based programs, which may be helpful to the committee uh, in looking, in, in checking our, uh, the provisions of our, our pending Senate bills. Um, and as such, we would also like to recommend with the permission of, with the kind permission of uh, the committee, that perhaps um, it would be helpful to include the participation of the UN Office of, uh, of Drug and Crime with regards to the UN joint program with the Philippine government um, in future uh, discussions and public hearings. And with the kind permission of the Honorable Committee, we would like to submit our written position paper after this hearing. And we look forward to participating further in, in future discussions. Again, thank you very much for the opportunity to share our views, uh, Mr. Chair. And thank you again, Mr. Uh, Senator Padilla. We truly appreciate your concern for the situation of our persons deprived of liberty. Daghang salamat. Thank you, Ma'am Katia Alvarez. Daghang salamat sa mga inputs mo. Thank you very much. Now, uh, let's hear from uh, Ms. Maria Inis Feria from Nube PH. Ano, Bax? Eh, ginawa mo nga itong X eh. Kaya, Nube yung basa ko. Nube PH. Ma'am, go ahead. You have the floor. 
Thank you, Senator De La Rosa, and good afternoon yeah. to everyone and to everyone present here today. Uh, so yeah, from Novax Philippines, so we're an organization that works on uh, drug policy and harm reduction. And um, we want to thank you for the opportunity to share then our- Ma'am, excuse me, can we see you? Uh, uh, can you turn on your video? I can't see you. Can you see me? Oh, uh, ah, you're so beautiful, man. Please uh, share your face uh, to us. Please, ma'am, continue. Continue, ma'am. Very kind. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so thank you again. Actually, I echo a lot of the things that Attorney uh, Kathy has already shared. So, I won't repeat it so much. But I wanted to say, lang na, yes, because of that gap malaki talagang pwedeng gawin ng community-based programs and services. So we think this is a golden opportunity, kumbaga, to actually uh, put together uh, the genuine community-based programs and services that really benefit our community members. And for this, I wanted to um, to point out uh, now sa, sa bills that we read, uh, the, the bills that we were able to read, um, na it highlights the need for a continuum of services. Kaya ang ganda dito is that we don't have just one particular service or program, but because we know that uh, drug use and problems that are associated with drug use are really um, uh, a result of uh, different factors the, pertaining to health, uh, social, economic factors. Kaya ang ganda na bring up about health and in fact, uh, Senator De La Rosa, I will echo what you have said as well in the past, where uh, drugs are a health and uh, social concern, uh, I quote, and that there is a need to, quote, support and strengthen the country's public health approach to the drug response. So ito exactong, uh, exacto. No? So um, I think what's key with community-based programs is they, they need to be readily accessible. Uh, nasabi na to, no, na parang what we want to make sure is that people will be able to to go and receive these services that we are providing them, no, and um, and you also cited some bills that there needs to be an active coordination among a number of health, social, and other non-specialist services to meet the client's needs, and I think that's a great recognition that this is not only a health concern that we're talking about. But about um, the total well-being of the individual and subsequently the community. Um, uh, one of the things in that was there that was mentioned was about the rehab referral desk, uh, which I thought was a great idea because again, accessibility, what we would want is that people would know where to go and that there would be immediate responses uh, doon sa pangangailangan nila, that they can actually be linked to the proper and appropriate services, no? And sometimes that's what's happened in the communities because we do engage with communities. Um, hindi nila alam kung saan pupunta. Ang key lang dito siguro sa community-based programs in designing them is that um, uh, kailangan natin tingnan siguro that um, there has, what was mentioned already by Attorney Kathy, the shifted indicators na sana Yung objective in having community-based programs is not to reduce quote-unquote drug affectation, but really to promote the health, safety, and well-being of the individuals and the communities. So titingnan natin at the local government level is how do we now incorporate and integrate uh, the functions of the Anti-Drug Abuse Council with the other councils on women, uh, on youth uh, development, all of those working together. Um, ang isa din na key uh, is about having community-based programs that are voluntary. Um, from the, our experience and from the evidence, hindi kailangan uh, hindi kailangan ilagay sa listahan yung tao para mag-access ng services. What we need to do is create these services and programs in a way that they feel okay, safe, and comfortable to approach them. Nakikita to eh, pupunta at pupunta, kung yung mga programa and services are those that 
are relevant to their lives and that they need, no? Um, the other thing also is that's why we also agree na um, sana i-revisit na this Anti-Drug Abuse Council would be led by health and social welfare. In the same way how the bills are saying that this um, Anti-Drug Abuse Councils would be good to uh, have close coordination with UH and uh, DSWD. Again, because of the intersections of health, social, economic issues. Um, siguro, uh, we can take this also in the context of Nabanggit na rin yung UN Joint Program, where there's a commitment uh, by the Philippine government to transition to community-based programs and services which are voluntary. So siguro yun yung pwedeng pag-usapan at kailangan tutug tutukan paano natin maging voluntary so that yung mga programa at services natin ay lalapitan ng mga tao. They do want to take care of themselves and I think it's we're not starting from zero. Uh, and this is something that that we can um like uh, put our heads together and design together. Uh kumbaga. Uh so yun, so siguro um one of the things that I wanted to point out again uh with regards to um not needing uh for people to be included in the list and to be uh, forced to access these services because they will come if the services are the appropriate ones, if the services are ones that they need, and if the services are provided in a way um where they feel safe and okay to access and they will, they will. The evidence is there uh, and we have seen it uh, happening. So, yun, siguro for now, uh, uh, I will leave it at that. And if, with your permission, uh, submit as well the position paper of the box uh, where we could de detail some of these things here. So, thank you. Thank you again, uh, Senator De La Rosa and everyone here. Thank you, ma'am. I mean, no box, uh, Philippines, ma'am, uh, NGO. Uh, yes, uh, no, we're a uh -huh. non-profit organization. In fact, actually, we have met once already before, so a couple of times, few times. So I was hoping to be there in person, but unfortunately, couldn't make it. But hoping that we get the opportunity to join more of your meetings and discussions, and we would love to be there in person. Okay, po, ma'am. Maraming salamat for your uh, you, po. beautiful ideas coming from a very beautiful uh, uh, resource person. Salamat po, ma'am. Thank you. I will Thank take you. in, will take in po lahat ng uh, inputs nyo. Salamat. Salamat. Uh, thank you. Sinong wala na? Wala na po, sir. So, wala na tayong pag-usapan? Ano? Adjour na? Ha? Adjour ka? Ha? Diretso na tayo. Huwag na. Diretso na. Uh, oh, bilis ito. Sir, uh, yun lang. Yun lang. Uh, sir, uh, Yusik uh, Liamas uh, pertaining to the 2% uh, yung palaging uh, uh, palaging uh, reklamo tayo yung ULAP, yung mga taga, yung ano pa yung ha? LPP, League of uh, Provinces of the Philippines. Yan palaging ayaw nila yung 2%. So, I just hope kung tayo mong, kayo mag-spread na kausapin sila na kung, yes, wala kong problema. Pero yes, hindi ko sila makumbinsi. Eh. Kukonsultahin pa rin mo namin sila. Kukonsultahin din. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, ha? Opo. Maraming salamat. Aga Meron ka pa sabihin? Sir? Sir, pahabol lang very quickly. The technical review na lang din kami in the meantime dito sa Sinai po ni DOF and the other attendees ang hearing regarding DIRGDDB Joint MC1 Series of 2018. Palang maklaro yung provisions ng 2% and at the same time, ilook na rin namin yung ibang mga parties na gustong makaintindi kung ano yung special provision na yun under the MC. Huwag kayo mo, huwag mo, huwag mo na kayo mag-effort na invalidate yung uh, circular uh, yung memorando uh, yung tawag dyan yung joint MC sir. yes sir MC na yan ha kasi yan natin pullback position yes sir yes sir <laughs> tayo yes, nakalusot sir. dito sa institutionalization natin dito pullback position natin yan so uh, I think uh, sir yes sir go ahead uh, actually it's more important na ma-institutionalize natin yung uh, ADAC ADAW yung 2% it's bonus na lang yun kung makuha natin Still here. <laughs>
Pero kung kaya ang kunin ng bonus, kunin pa rin natin, di ba? Kung kaya lang. Pero kung hindi, wala tayo magawa. So, yun lang. Uh, meron pa kang sabihin, ma'am. Uh, so, ma'am. if I may uh, request lang pa the, the DDB kung if you have a finish uh, a copy of the technical review. So, we can also um, uh, study the, the provisions. Yes. The technical review, Mr. Chair, to further clarify but not to recommend for the repeal. <laughs> okay, yun po, just to contextualize. Okay. okay. Ah, thank you, thank you. Sinabi ko, klaro, klaro yun. So, Pidig, kumusta mga operations ninyo? Nag-operate ba kayo? Yes, sir. Maraming uh, ginagawa. Relentless operations, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, wag, wag niyong lubayan, ha? Continue. Yes, sir. Hindi uh, masayang yung uh, kuha natin. Yes, ako nang bahala sa problema ko sa ICC. Yes, sir. Huwag so, na kayong problema dyan. Ako nang bahala doon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, magalala. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your efforts. Uh, again, uh, I would like to thank everyone for uh, your con presence and your valuable contribution to this hearing. Uh, alam nyo, sabi kagad ng kumusik namin, no? Ano? Adyo na daw kagad. So wala nang hearing ito. Tuloy-tuloy na ito sa sponsor ko na itong uh, uh, sponsor ko na ito kagad. Yung committee report na ito after, after this. So kung meron kayong mga pahabol, padala lang nyo habang hindi pa nagawa natin yung uh, Kasi dalawang bill ito, uh, gagawa tayo ng substitute bill para sa dalawang bills na ito para incorporate natin sa ating committee report. So kung wala na, again, maraming salamat. Ha? Thank you. Thank you sa inyong lahat. Uh, meeting is uh, heavy adjourned.